Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, family, friends, and YouTube subscribers. Uh, this video is another video from my pew to you. Uh, you remember last Friday I put out a video asking a lot of people to pray for me. I was going to be going into heart surgery at Loma Linda University Medical Center. And by the way, this medical center is a world, has a world-renowned uh, heart institute, a heart center inside of it. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal hospital. I'm so thankful that I got sent there. But uh, I asked for your prayers uh, uh, because I'd be going into surgery and I was concerned uh, that, uh, I, that I would have to do another cardio version, which might make me go code blue again. Long story short, when I was there Friday morning, my blood test came back too thin and I was uh, uh, at too high of a risk, the doctor said, my cardiologist. So in his, his uh, wise advice and wisdom is he would not do the surgery. He sent me back home with some further instructions as well as some modifications in my medicine. And uh, I didn't tell anybody, I kept this a secret, but um, my next appointment was Monday morning, which is yesterday. And so I went in and uh, the blood test came back good. We were all rejoicing and clapping our hands when the machine said INR is 2.6. We were all excited and boof, they sent me into the surgical room, surgery room, which uh, had a team already preparing it for me in, in case the blood test came back. But I want to talk about a few things here and give all the praise and glory and honor uh, to the Lord, but also giving thanks to you for praying for me and giving thanks to the Loma Linda University Medical Center. They're a wonderful, wonderful, amazing staff. The doctors, the, 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 the echo, the, um, everybody, the nurses, the, the assistants, uh, all of them are just absolutely wonderful. But uh, um, when I went in the, for the surgery yesterday morning, because of my, by the way, a lot of people are saying that AFib's not that bad. Well, first of all, I don't have regular AFib. I have a, a particular type of AFib that that will eventually uh, cause me to have a, a crippling stroke or, or death, whichever one comes first. So this is something that I needed to take some drastic measures and, uh, and hopefully the doctors can get me out of this AFib. It's basically converting your heart, kind of like in a spiritual realm. When I got saved November 14th of 1991, justified, I experienced the doctrine of justification and regeneration where God converted my heart uh, from the darkness to the light. He transformed me. He changed my heart and converted it uh, from, from a, a dead man to a live man in Christ. And that's what this uh, cardioversion, uh, that's what this surgery needed to do, do the ablation, was to uh, uh, change my timing and the ignition uh, so that uh, the way my heart fires, the electricity of the heart, will convert back to a normal, healthy heart again. And um, so uh, this doctor took so many uh, great risks because of, my, um, because of my state. It's very unpredictable. And remember, last January, I went into full cardiac arrest, code blue a few times. But um, uh, they also uh, did what's called a transophical echocardiogram. I had to look at that word because it's not yet in my vocabulary. Um, but they did a transophical echocardiogram in concert with the ablation. And, uh, uh, and they also placed a, a breathing tube uh, down my mouth and into my throat. And, um, and so in a case if I, uh, that way I can breathe because again, uh, there was a risk uh, that I would uh, not breathe, that my heart would stop again. Um, but what's interesting is just before the anesthesiologists, plural, uh, were injecting me to put me to sleep, uh, feeding that IV line, uh, I looked around and I started counting people and I lost count at 15. What I mean by lost count is, is I don't remember because I was, I was asleep. I was gone. <laughs> I was in la la land. And um, I wasn't even in that. I was totally unconscious. But uh, I, I counted at least 15 people there, folks. This is a, this is a hospital that takes surgery very seriously and um, to wellness and wholeness of life very seriously. But at least 15 heads I counted there. And that was, the, that was even before my cardiologist entered the room. Um, he's kind of like the last one to come in when everybody's prepared. I had people on my right, people on my left, people at my feet, people at my head, and, and uh, watching this scope and uh, watching the transophical echocardiogram and, and watching uh, all of these different things. That way that uh, they wouldn't make any mistakes. Uh, that way they wouldn't uh, pierce a part of the heart because they, they actually had to punch two holes in my heart. I've got a heart now with two holes in it that will eventually mend and, and develop scar tissue, but uh, it was a serious surgery, not to mention the fact that there was a great risk of uh, my diaphragm being punctured, uh, 
Uh, another risk that of my two wires from my I, I my my um, ICD implant that I have in my chest, those two wires being ripped out. So they they took three dimensional uh, precautionary precautionary. I still got medicine in me. Precautionary measures uh, to make sure that those things wouldn't happen. Um, but uh, I was overwhelmed with the employees at this hospital. Well, let me go back to the, the surgery. I woke up in another room, in the recovery room, and um, they were talking to me, uh, wake up, Mr. Retz, wake up, Mr. Retz, William, William, William. I kept hearing those names, and I finally woke up, and I said, where am I? What happened? And, and they said that, that the surgery was a success, that my heart was converted back to a, a normal rhythm. Um, and um, I remember the first thing I asked them was, did you do a cardioversion? <laughs> and they said, yes, we had to do a cardioversion. But praise God, I mean, uh, I'm not complaining, folks. Um, no pain, no gain. You know, you got to do things drastically sometimes to make things right. But uh, I am just overwhelmed with the employees, the staff, the doctors, the nurses, and all of the employees at this hospital. Uh, I was witnessing to, to many of them, and come to find out, they were witnessing to me. Um, many of them were, were Christians. Um, and uh, matter of fact, I, I know one that was kind of was, was calling me a theologist because while I was studying in, in the recovery, I was studying on a book on theology. And uh, we know what theology is and we know what a theologian is. Um, but he used the word uh, uh, theologist, uh, a nice new word that I like. Um, but uh, and then there's another uh, uh, nurse. Um, he uh, was a Christian. He encouraged me and come over and lay hands on me and prayed for me. Uh, gave me a, a nice little gift that I have down here um, and uh, might even establish a relationship with him later. Uh, we exchanged business cards uh, today. But um, uh, I'm just so overwhelmed with the wonderful, the professionalism, the, the, the friendliness, the, the, the compassion, and also people of faith that were demonstrating their faith, encouraging another Christian, a patient, uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. But um, enough of that. Um, but last, I want to thank all of you. Oh, uh, there, is a, there is a risk um, that this AFib with RVR, particular level that I have, there is a risk that this actually could come back. Um, it's, it, there's, I mean, he can't give me a number, but um, I've done internet research, and there's a lot of people where it comes back. It's just the way it happens, folks. I pray it doesn't, but maybe it will. But I did ask the doctor, is there anything that I can do that would that would uh, create this this eight particular AFib to come back, you know, due to uh, un unhealthy lifestyle or or taking unnecessary risks or maybe exerting myself too much or or stress. What can bring it back? And he said two things: one, caffeine, and the other, alcohol. And I praise God, I quit alcohol. Ye excuse me. <laughs> I think I've still got some uh, anesthesia or morphine in me. One of them is alcohol, and I praise God, I quit that years ago. And the other one is caffeine, and uh, I quit caffeine back in November um, when uh, when all of this happened. So uh, and uh, so I, I, I want to you know just something for you guys to consider, folks. Um, I'm certainly not telling anybody that you cannot drink or you cannot have caffeine. Um, I'm a retired cop. I like going to the donut shop and having a cup of coffee. Uh, but uh, you consider the risks, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know my stand on alcohol. There's a video on that. And, um, and I'm certainly not telling people to stop coffee. Um, if I could, I would, believe me. But uh, knowing that my caffeine, a cup of coffee, could bring this AFib back, I would be derelict of my duties. I would be, I would be so irresponsible that I deserve to have AFib back. It's just the way I've got to look at it now. Uh, that's a conviction I have myself because it's medical advice from a doctor. Um, but while I'm thinking about this, about coffee, um, one of the doctrines that I studied um, I studied two doctrines while I was there. One of them is um, I haven't. I had to revisit. I haven't studied it in, in years, and that's the doctrine of grace within the church. And uh, it's a doctrine that I have actually um, took for granted, big time, in a sinful way. And uh, one of the verses I'm going to share share with you says that we're to confess our sins or faults with one another. We don't have to t tell the details of the sins, but I'm going to tell you the detail of this sin. Um, that verse really means just to confess that I, I've sinned and, and please pray for me. But, but I'm going to tell you what the sin is, and that's that I've taken the doctrine of grace within the church for granted. Um, for example, regarding caffeine and decaffeinated coffee, uh, 
months ago when I first experienced all this at our church, our deacon's wife, Angela. Angela, if you're watching this video, I want to thank you. But when I see you, uh, Lord willing, very soon, hope, um, I will be thanking you in person uh, for the decaffeinated coffee that you took upon yourself to make for me. Uh, Sister Angela makes the pot of coffee on the left and pot of coffee on the right, and she puts the, the orange deca decaffeinated coffee uh, can on top of the coffee pot, so I'll know which one is decaf. And now I have decaf coffee uh, downstairs when we do our koinonia and when we break bread and have a good meal together. Now I've got a choice there. Uh, that, that is absolutely wonderful. And I know another sister uh, at church, she's actually starting to drink decaf coffee now. But um, nobody asked her to, but, uh, but she wants to be careful. So, um, But please, I, those of you that drink coffee, I, I will never judge you. I'll just be jealous of you. And that, be honest with you, jealousy is a sin too. So um, anyways, uh, the doctrine of the grace within the church. And I am so thankful that I studied this uh, right here, right now, at this particular time, in a, in a recovery room at Loma, Loma Linda University Medical Center. Um, but uh, I want to thank all of you that uh, prayed for me, uh, my pastor, our church, my pastor's wife uh, that was in contact with my wife, uh, our congregation, uh, several other pastors from several other churches. Uh, what comes to my mind right now is one in Hesperia, one in Ontario, one in San Bernardino, um, and other pastors in their congregations, um, at least on their prayer nights, were, were praying for me. Uh, that, that is absolutely amazing to know that our Bride of Christ is so big and so universal that that we mourn together. When we mourn, we mourn for each other. When we when we uh, have have joys in our life, we, we rejoice with each other. Uh, when we suffer, we suffer with each other. Um, that's what the scripture says. And and uh, when we're hurting physically and medically, we pray for each other. And that is such a blessing. Um, but <clears throat> lastly, I want to share these verses with you. The Bible says in James five sixteen. Confess your faults to one another, and I just confess one of them to you, taking the doctrine of grace within the church for granted, which is a sin, not a sin of commission, it's a sin of omission. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another. <clears throat> Boy, I'll be glad when my sore throat's gone from those tubes. That ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What is a righteous man? This is gender neutral. Righteous men and righteous women. Righteous persons. A righteous Christian. A follower of Christ. A righteous person is, is regenerate and they're clothed with the imputed righteousness of Christ. That's what a righteous man or woman is. And it says that, 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 that you will be healed and it, the, the, the fervent prayers avail much. Of course, spiritual healing is what we want the most. Physical healing, sometimes God says yes, sometimes he says no. Um, but by the way, I, I know that you, when you hear this, you're going to think I'm boasting or that I'm pointing at me. I'm not. But listen to this. Don't turn the video off when I say this. But God has always answered 100% of my prayers. You say, oh, man, that's blasphemy. That's lying. No, no, actually he has. His answer, answer is always either yes, no, or wait. And here the Lord answered yes on most of it. No on one of them. I didn't want a cardio version, but I got a cardio version. But the bottom line is it all worked out in God's divine providence, His sovereignty, His divine will. It's amazing. I'm so excited. Uh, it says in 1 John 5, verses 14 through 15, Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. If it's according to His will, He hears us. If we ask, Lord, I want this and I want that, He ain't going to listen to you, folks. But when we're asking according to his will, in other words, Lord, let thy will be done. If we ask according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. We must ask our, our prayers must be according to his will. Yeah, I, I can pray sometimes, try to twist it a little bit, say, Lord, but if you would, please find favor in me or grace in this area. But really, we're supposed to ask according to his will. And another thing that will actually hinder our prayers is our sin. Unconfessed, unrepented sin can hinder your prayers. One will, one will for sure, and that's how I treat my wife. Scripture is very clear that if I treat my wife wrong, uh, that will hinder my prayer life. Uh, so we must continually repent 
from those sins and continu continually confess those sins, continually have a good standing with God uh, by drawing near to Him uh, and, and say, Lord, forgive me. Would you please uh, answer these prayers according to your will? It says in Psalm 66, 19, But truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. 2 Corinthians 10, 17, If you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. Scripture says, boast in the Lord. There's only two things that we are to boast in, Christians. We're, only to bo we're not to boast in our children. We're not to boast in our grandchildren. There's only two things we're to boast in. That's Christ and the cross, or the Lord. If you want to boast, boast only in the Lord. Psalms 115 says, not to us, but to your name, give glory. Sola de gloria, give all the glory to God. Isaiah 42, 12 says, let them give glory to the Lord, and declare his praise in the coastlands. Well, that concludes my video uh, from my pew to you. Please don't ever hesitate. Don't hesitate to uh, to contact me and ask me to pray for you. Whatever if it's in a private email, uh, some of you that have my phone number, or uh, in the comment section under this video, uh, please uh, let let me know what I can pray for you too as well. I'd love to reciprocate in that area. I want to pray uh, for you as well. Um, because uh, that, that's a blessing. God loves it when the saints are praying for each other. Uh, so let me close in prayer. Father God, we want to give you praise, glory, and honor. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord. Lord, as we speak to you, the first person of the Trinity, Lord God, we praise you so much. We ask, Lord God, that, that you would uh, edify your church through this video, that your church would be edified. And Christ, the second person of this trinity, Christ God Almighty, fully God and fully, fully man, God in the flesh, my Redeemer, the Redeemer of my sins, Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for saving a wretch like me. And to the third person of this holy trinity, the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. O oh, Holy Spirit, I pray, God, that you would minister to the hearts and minds of those watching this video. Lord, we know that your word will not return void. I pray, God, Lord, that you would edify your bride that's listening to this. Encourage them to remain steadfast in their faith and endure to the end. And Lord, had this surgery, surgery not, not worked out, had it not gone well, I pray that, that I would still be able to give you praise, glory, and honor. And Lord, had I died, had I gone code blue again and had I died, I would have been with you, Lord, and I really would have been praising and giving glory to God. The only thing is I wouldn't have been able to give that report on the Internet. Lord, I also pray for my, my uh, electrophysiologists, the cardiologists, uh, my doctors, many of them, many cardiologists now, three of them, I, uh, two of them and many doctors, all of the anesthesiologists, all the nurses, the uh, nurse practitioner, all of the, the medical staff, medical assistants, Lord, uh, so many of them, surgeons, you name it, they, they were part of this, Lord God. And I pray, God, that, uh, that it would be your will to grant those of them that do not know you and that you do not know them, I pray that you would grant them repentance and bestow your gift of salvation to them as well, Lord. Lord, I love them very much and I'm very thankful for them. But first and foremost, I'm thankful for you and I love you and I want to give you all the glory, honor, and praise in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Thank you, folks. God bless you. Amen.